Before the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, executives sold a lot of their shares. They're trying to shut down any conversation so people don't have any fear. Elon Musk is open to the idea of buying Silicon Valley Bank as he lays Twitter payments, groundwork, company-wide bonuses hours before it collapsed. Let me see your polls real quick. Okay, you've got a heartbeat approved. Some of the people are asking, what's going on with the banks? What's going on with uh, Silicon Valley Bank? What's going on with potentially uh, more potential bank failures in the future happening? All my observations has been this. When interest rates starts picking back up, here's what gets exposed. Fake money, fake people, fake companies, and fake policies that just didn't work. And the recession and hard times exposes those things. For example, we got exposed in 07, 08, 09, this ripoff artist named Bernie Madoff. Got exposed that he was ripping people off in his investment company. And had it not been for tough times, he would have still been ripping people off. But thank God for tough times because for frauds like him got exposed. What also got exposed? That these mortgage companies were giving out loans to people. They called them ninja loans, Milton. You know what ninja loans are? It's an acronym, ninja. Ninja loans. None. Uh, it's no job. No, no income, no job. N-I-N. No income, no job. Approved. <laughs> ninja loans. Yeah. The, 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 the mortgage company would go like, okay, let me see your pulse real quick. Okay, you've got a heartbeat approved. Now I'm seeing a lot of the same things happening. Cryptocurrency is being exposed. Lack of regulation is being exposed. Banks are being exposed. And now tough times are exposing a lot of fake things that are happening in America. When you dumped 80% of money that's ever pr been printed in history of America, think about this. Since the history of America, 1776, 80% of all money printed in the history of America has been printed in the last three years. And people are wondering why there's a flood of cash that just entered America, a lot of fake money, a lot of fake success, a lot of fake stuff. And so people are wondering what to do now. So uh, let's go here to my computer here. Um, uh, regulators close crypto-focused signature bank. See, signature bank, in addition to SV Bank, Silicon Valley Bank, had specific clientele. And a lot of their clientele was people in tech. Their clientele was people in crypto. And they got shut down too as well last week. Um, U.S. government steps in and says people with funds deposited SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, will be able to access their money. Uh, the regulator stepped in. FDIC is coming in. Um, but here's a challenge, though. Here's a challenge. Silicon Valley Bank raised, and excuse me, Silicon Valley Bank ranked second amongst banks with more than 50 billion in assets with 93.9% of its total domestic deposits being uninsured. Well, Signature Bank ranked fourth, according to S&P Global Market Intelligence data, as a year end of 2022. People are looking to blame now. So let's look at my let's at the screen. Trump is being called out. Why? Because there's an act in 07, 08, 09 called the Dodd-Frank Act. And it caused a lot of regulations and laws to make sure that this doesn't happen to our country ever again. So banks and insurance companies and financial institutions were required to have a certain amount of cash assets on hand to make sure they can pay the guarantees or the reassurances of the customers that's there because to have a bank in a modern era of people working hard for them to worry about their deposits, let alone their retirement accounts, mm. the Dodd-Frank Act was put in place. Now, Trump is being called because he rolled back. So if you go here, 2018, Trump signed into a bill that rolled back certain provisions in the Dodd-Frank Act, loosening oversight on banks. Basically, he reduced the amount of assets a bank needed to have on hand to bank. Because what, here, here's what happens. Uh, a lot of people, let's, let's, let's uh, cut the screen. So when, when we're looking at banks, here's the basic premise of banks. For example, if you, ever, uh, if you have like, for example, $50,000 in a bank, what do you think that bank is doing with your money? They can take 10% of that, what they call fractional lending, mm -hmm. and they can loan out 90% of those deposits to somebody else. Yeah, right. Long right, but they, right. So, so ninety percent of the deposits you have is lent out to somebody else in terms of car loans, student loans, credit cards, uh, mortgages. Mm. So, let's say they're loaning at nine percent, they're paying you one. That difference at eight percent is the banks. So that's called fractional reserve lending. So that's why your bank will never have all the cash that you want. For example, if you want fifty thousand dollars of your money back, then you know yeah. what they, they're going to say? Come back next week. We'll have your cash. Yeah, a couple of days. Because they need to come back and order your money. Because yeah. your money is out, it's being lent. So, so your 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 money is being lent out. So, like, like I've always said that banks are banking is required, but banks are not. 
because we talk about how to be your own banker Correct. all the time. And, and, and when you're financially educated, you can learn how to become your own banker. But banks aren't required. Banking is. Let's take a look, a look at uh, this other article here. It says, Bell Ackman says U.S. did the right thing in protecting SV depositors. Not everyone agrees. Billionaire investor Bill Ackman said U.S. government's intervention to protect depositors after the implosion of Silicon Valley Bank is not a bailout and helps restore confidence in the banking system. You know, there's, there's, a, lot of, um, there's a lot of folks that were, excuse me, politicians. They were asking social media companies to censor anything related to bank failures because it might cause a run on the bank. What's a run on the bank? It means you run to the bank, you withdraw your money. All of it. Everybody runs to the bank and withdraws their money. That's called a run on the bank. Well, if there's a run on the bank, guess what happens to the fractional reserve lending conversation we just had moments ago? It, it makes the bank fail because yeah. now they, they ran out of money because right. your money's in somebody else's right. loans. That's what happened to SV Bank. They became a run on the bank, and they're trying to shut down any conversation so people don't have any fear as it relates to social media. But here's a challenge, though. Why did, why did the bank... Why did the rising interest rates start exposing, in this case, banks? Because what happened is the bank had a certain amount of money in bonds that was purchased, you know, five, six, seven years ago. Interest rates were very low back then. That's why they can afford to give out loans at such a low rate. They flooded the market with cash. Remember, with 80% of all cash created in the last, you know, uh, uh, three years was 80% of all the money printed in the history of America. So when you, when you have all this money flushed out and the interest rate starts picking back up, if I have this bond, who wants to buy, who wants to buy a 1.75% bond if I can buy a bond at 4 or 5%? Mm. Nobody wants to buy this one. So guess we, why you have to sell it, what price you have to sell it for? At, at what you bought it for, and more than what you bought it for, and less than what you bought it for. What do you think? If nobody wants to buy it, what, what do you sell less. it? Less. It's called a discount. Yeah, discount. If you buy more than what it's worth, it's called a premium. Yeah. So these banks are selling bonds at a discount. Well, that created a loss at the bank. So now everybody's, frit- everybody's curious about what's going on. They withdraw their money. Mm-hmm. So you know, there's a run in the bank. And that's what, triggered, uh, that's what triggered these things. The problem, though, is the reason why I say that is because if it affected that regional bank, a senior uh, a Silicon Valley bank or a signature bank, because who also might be affected. The lower banks that may not have as much cash on hand, if there's a run in the bank on the smaller banks, because interest rates starts rising, it's going to hurt the smaller banks. Go down to your bank. No motion. Ask them, is this bank, are my accounts FDIC insured? Make sure, and if, if worse comes to worse, what do I do? Call the bank manager. What do I do if I hear there's a run in the banks, the banks are starting to implode, is my money insured? Ask your bank calmly. And I'm sure you're not the first person to ask them yeah. that question. A couple other things here. If there's a bailout, here's, here's what Peter Schiff said. Peter Schiff is the guy that predicted the, uh, uh, let's go on, the, my, on my screen here, uh, Jordan, please. Thank you. Uh, bailing out depositors of failed banks is another mistake. So Peter Schiff here is saying, listen, if, you, if your money's there at a bank and you want the government to bail you out, it's a, a mistake by the federal and the U.S. government. Not only does a moral hazard lead to even greater instability in the banking system and larger future losses, but the inflation created to pay for it unfairly socializes current losses. In other words, do the banks of failure of banks, failures of government, guess who's paying for it? All of us. Socializing the problem. Like it's now everybody's problem when there's really a bunch of guys in a boardroom and, and, and policymakers that could have fixed this stuff uh, a long time ago. Peter Thiel. Now, here's the crazy part. Here's a little conspiracy behind it. Peter Thiel, founders fund, got his cash, out of Silicon Valley Bank before he was shut down. Uh, this guy, uh, Peter Thiel, is the guy who's known as the guy that uh, establishes uh, Roth IRA in the late, ni- in late 90s. Mm. And today he's got like a billion dollars inside of his Roth IRA. He doesn't have to pay any tax on it. So that, that's, that's what uh, he's known for. He's part of the inside, part of the inside track. Elon Musk is open to the idea of buying Silicon Valley Bank as he lays Twitter payments <laughs> groundwork. Well, that'd be awesome. Now, Elon Musk buying a bank. He buys a social media company, now buys a bank. This is why you make money, man. You want to make moves in the right, in the right direction. Um, CEO Valley Bank CEO, Silicon Valley Bank CEO, sold 3.5 million in shares just two weeks before the collapse. And here's the crazy part. Look at this chart. Before the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, executives sold a lot of their shares. The CEO sold 11% of his shares. Michael Zucker sold 19%. 
Daniel Banks sold 32%, Michael Draper, CMO sold 25% before, before the implosion. These aren't automatic though? Huh? Aren't these auto, uh, usually automatic? No, they, they, they called in and said, well, we're selling our shares. I mean, what, what mm. do you mean automatic? Because I was, they sold their shares, I apologize. I, it just, uh, so before yeah, the bank yeah. collapsed, they, yeah, sold, yeah. they sold a portion of their ownership in the bank for cash at a high point yeah. before it imploded. Huh. huh. Right. Makes, makes you think, huh? Peter Thiel, his buddies, executives here, something going on, man. Cellcom Valley Bank gave company wide bonuses hours before it collapsed. Interesting. So they wide took care bonuses. of themselves, they took care of the people. Who do they end up screwing over? The people. The, the people, the right. depositors. Okay? And you, you know what's cool about this, Jack? Move. Uh, uh, we're done with the screen here, uh, Jordan. You know what's crazy about this? Guess what, guess what uh, Jamie Dimon did over the weekend? He's the CEO of Chase Bank. You know what he did over the weekend? He told all those guys, let's get on the phone, call everybody we know over there at Signature Bank, call everybody we know over there, their depositors at Silicon Valley Bank, and move their money to Chase. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.